it's a hard, hard, hard slog for people out there, man. Like it feels like every single day I'm hearing big, big, big companies laying off a huge amount of people. Obviously, some of the biggest ones were obviously Twitter with um, Elon Musk announcing that he was taking over and deciding he was going to kind of trim stuff down and make him a bit of a lean operation. But that kind of felt like him just flexing his muscle as the kind of boss and basically whipping people into shape, you know, similar to what Jose Marino used to do when he used to first get his job at a big club. He would essentially, you know, bench somebody really integral to the team. He'd come into a, a really, you know, established team maybe with established hierarchy and he'd go after somebody who everybody kind of felt was maybe un not untouchable, but somebody that no one really kind of messed with, maybe because of their status, maybe because of their record at the club, maybe because of the profession or whatever, maybe he'd cause a problem with that person just to kind of let it be known that he's got smoke at everybody. And usually there'd always be one or two sacrificial lambs that you kind of get rid of. And I feel like, you know, people maybe saw the Elon Musk um, job cuts at Twitter being a kind of representation of that, of him basically, you know, basically asserting his authority but this announcement that came recently just the other day is just courtesy of the verge it says meta formerly known as facebook announces huge job cuts affecting eleven thousand employees it's absolutely brutal and it's clearly a wake-up call and a reminder for someone like myself who's working and who myself previously had a very i'd say careless relationship when it came to employment and kind of felt like I was above jobs and stuff and felt like, you know, there was always something cool around the corner for me or that I would be doing my own thing. So who cares about the thing that I've got? I really do thank the pandemic for kind of humbling me because for the, I won't say the majority, but for the first half of the pandemic, maybe the first year of it, um, I was unemployed, right? I, you know, the job that I had going into the pandemic, unfortunately I lost. And then um, I was struggling to find anything in that time because clearly people were gun shy or hiring shy, sorry. Um, and they didn't want to get hire more people in the, the field that I was working at the time, which was mostly marketing, social media and influencer stuff wasn't necessarily the place that people would be hiring more people to work in during the pandemic and during a downturn in the economy and whatnot. Even though more people were consuming more content online than ever before and more influencer -led content, but still it was difficult to find positions. And the fact that everybody was sort of out of work, it kind of made the job market very competitive. So maybe in previous years, I would have been able to find something quicker, but because I was competing with people who had better experience than me, who were maybe more senior than me, um, it very it made the, the job competition thing much harder and it was a lot brutal to take because you'd be applying for roles, maybe getting somewhere, maybe getting past the first or second hurdle and then clearly being told, hey, we picked somebody else before you because they're better, because they had more experience, because they had prepared a better, you know, presentation, whatever it may be. So it kind of was harder to take because beforehand, you know, people just air you, maybe not reply, but when people are giving you detailed analysis of reports of why you didn't get the job because I think at that time also people were very sensitive to getting rejection so a lot of companies were being pressured to provide some feedback so it made it very tense but I was thankful that I did get something and when I did get it I then had a new kind of appreciation and a, you know um, for jobs in general and what it could provide for you and the ability to pay your bills, the ability to feed yourself, put clothes on your back and also the ability it gave me to do the things I wanted to do, right? To buy microphones, to buy cameras, to be able to set up a podcast, all this sort of stuff comes because I'm able to be employed somewhere and have a regular nine to five that's able to kind of offset these costs and allow me to do the things that I'm actually passionate about. And if it turns into a full-time gig, of course, amazing, but my bread and butter always has to be the kind of job I got. So when I see this sort of stuff, it kind of, it kind of hits home a little bit more because I I went through a rocky period in my life especially during the pandemic and also i'm more appreciative of my roles now than ever before but also to be honest i think if i was a facebook if i was a meta employee if i was a twitter employee i don't think i would have been naive enough to just wait around for them to make this decision i would have been cognitive of the world around me and made my adjustments here and there but i also understand how difficult it is to do that when you're an adult and you've got people to look after and stuff i get it, i get it but this is pretty gruesome, man. Meta announces huge job cuts affecting 11,000 employees, courtesy of The Verge. It says Meta's announced 
to lay off 11,000 employees or around 13% of the company's total staff. CEO Mark Zuckerberg announced the news in a blog post saying that he was at fault for being over-optimistic about the company's future growth based on the pandemic surge. At the start of COVID, he said, the world rapidly moved online and the search for e-commerce led to an outsized revenue growth. Many people predicted this would be permanent and acceleration that would continue even after the pandemic ended. I did too. So I made the decision to significantly increase our investments. Unfortunately, this did not play out the way I expected. I like that how he's referring to the workforce as investments and he's not using any language to belittle or demean or to diminish um, what those people did during that time and what they were hired under the premise of because I'd imagine a lot of those people were sold a bit of a dream in their interview in terms of growth, in terms of what the company's heading and looking to go and then, you know, a few months down the line, suddenly now you're out of a job. So I love the fact that he's kind of choosing his words widely here. Unfortunately, da, 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 it's not how I expected. Zuckerberg said the company could now become leaner and more efficient by cutting spending and staff and shift more resources to a smaller number of high priority growth areas, including ads, AI, and the metaverse. He's still going on with that bloody hell. Zuckerberg said that the company's recruiting team would be particularly disproportionately affected by the cuts department. Um, oh, really? This is mostly recruitment. Jesus. Meta reported um, some 87,000 employees in September, which today's level of making the first broad cut since the firm was founded in 2004 oh so this might be this might not even be founding members this might just be people who have been there for a while and also people who just never left which is probably the same thing but you know what i mean like fuck me eighty-seven thousand employees um why has meta hit so hard well a projected downturn in the u.s economy has blunted momentum for many tech stocks but the company's prospects have been affected by the both strong competition from its rivals and wayward strategy the rise of tiktok and the changes in apple's privacy policy have squeezed meta's financial lucrative business model while the company's investments in the nansen um, metaverse look increasingly misguided meta has lost nine point four billion of this metaverse technology <laughs> in 2022 so far and says they expect to spend seven even more on a business in the future they've already lost 9.4 billion on metaverse tech and they already want to lose more startups still exist in another world man meanwhile the company's flagship metaverse social platform horizon worlds is so buggy and unpopular that meta's own managers have been forced to shame employees into using it i remember i reading something about Elon thing in Twitter that was from a very smart person who said the issue that a lot of people in tech might have to wake up to I think yeah I think it was around the issue around Elon second everybody at Twitter or I think it was 11% of the was it 11% I don't know how percent it was I remember somebody smart saying something along the lines of the issue here for people is that if he proves the concept correct like if Musk is able to come into Twitter lean make them a leaner more meaner operation get rid of all the fluff, do that whole Twitter blue thing with the verification badge and everything else has been going, generate some money that way, but basically be able to prove that you can make money with Twitter and it could be somewhat profitable by not having so many, you know, not having a bloated workforce. Other startups might do the same because startups in general are very copycatty in everything that they do. So if somebody else is able to kind of get away with having a PR team of one, they might also decide, you know what, we don't need 17 people in pr we just need maybe two or one also and they might copy and follow suit so that's the the risk you know at hand for people who work at startups where you know founders must start questioning very strong held beliefs that they've had for a while because elon musk comes in with a fresh idea of how to approach things especially if you look at how he's done stuff like spacex or tesla there's loads of staff turnaround whether it's people hiring and firing whether it's them leaving themselves so clearly it's something that he kind of abides by especially when it comes to kind of cutting cost it's a quick way to do it because i'm assuming they probably all pay pretty well so if you get rid of those people straight away you can you know ease up the flipping uh books and use that money to be applied into different areas of the business and whatnot but god damn it man i can't imagine 87 you know what you call it where's the 11 11 000 people being sacked you know just before christmas and also this is also a good reminder for me and realization that i'm not an entrepreneur i think for the longest time when i was kind of growing up i kind of saw myself being the guy that would be you know founding his own million dollar startup or something or going on shark tank or going on dragon's den and doing that kind of thing right or running sorry three different businesses at the same time whether it's something in property whether it's a tech company whatever maybe right doing this thing and juggling it or actually being a real entrepreneur in that regard 
and I think as life has progressed, I realized that of course, what I actually want is the freedom, the luxury to do the things that I want to do. Um, the kind of uh, lifestyle freedom, right? The location independency, to be able to kind of make money off my own dime sort of thing, off the sweat of my own brow. But that doesn't mean you're an entrepreneur. That might mean you're creative. That might mean you're, uh, um, I don't know, hustler, whatever it may be, whatever that term is, but it doesn't mean you're an entrepreneur because entrepreneurs, this is what this is the hard part of it they show you all the lambos on flipping social media and shit but they don't show you when you have to flipping let go of eleven thousand people some of which have families and stuff depending on that salary they get you know just before christmas it doesn't matter if they get a severance or not it doesn't matter if the severance is a year the fact that you still don't have a job in that uncertainty the fact that you've had this job probably since 2004 maybe later is brutal so Thoughts and feelings go out for everybody out there that's been affected by it. Hopefully, you land on your feet. Hopefully, you land on your feet. And for those of you who do have jobs who take it for granted, working in creative fields and want to do things outside of your career, honor your job, respect your job, and treat it like the main B I T C H it is because that job is what funds everything else that you're doing, especially if you're not full time and you're doing anything that you want to do yet. Don't take it for granted because you never know when that thing can get taken away from you and then suddenly life becomes real again and you don't need to have that realization before you have you have you have that realization. Do you know what I mean? Yeah.